Hey guys, welcome back to Tommy Legends, and once again, thank you for stopping by. So I've got a real treat today, um, something 100% genuine and as vintage as it gets. Um, as you can see, it's in quite a small box, so it's not a built car. Um, this is Tamiya number 58046. So this particular model was number 46 out of the first 100. Um, and that takes us back to the release date, which was December 1984. 1984. Um, production lasted for two years through to 86, and then it turned into something else. I'm absolutely stoked to get this. When we start looking at it, you'll see why. This is something, not just the car itself, but the whole, everything I've got here is just pretty different. Um, so I wonder if you know what the car is just by that. So of course, it's the Tamiya Fav, fast attack vehicle. There's the, that's the original manual for it. Um, never had a Fav. Um, when they reread it and they did the shark mouth and a couple of versions of it, it did something that didn't really float my boat because if I was gonna if I was gonna go down that line for a reread, I um, I would have gone down for a wild one because it's it was newer and more more improved. Um, but this came up on a local selling site, so I, I did a bit of digging around because I wanted to make sure everything was here. Um, the guy I bought from, I bought a few things off, and he's a really good guy over here in Canada, and he really knows his stuff when it comes to vintage Tamiya. So I'm really stoked to get this. So let's have a look what's inside. So I have already opened this because I wanted to do kind of a live unboxing, but I just wanted to make sure it, it was what I thought it was. Um, so I, I, I took these out, so they're the 1984 original fast attack vehicle decals. See, I've not had an army vehicle from Tamiya since I was about 10 years old when I used to run an XR311 and it was absolutely bodged to bits, every part was broken on it. So again it's not one of the vehicles I would have gone for but when you get one that's all fully original and what did I say 1984 you know that's got some this has got some serious age to it so that's the decals and then as you can see it came with the original manual and that's in tip-top condition as well so inside the box look at that so basically this well I, I don't know fully but we've got a mixture of new and old parts, but every part in here is original. It's taken the guy ages to find all the bits for it, which is something I wouldn't have the patience to do because I'm too lazy. So as I say, some parts are used, but then we've got all the like part trees and stuff. And again, all fully 100% vintage, which is just super rare. So let's open it up and see what we've got. Look at all that vintage goodness. Look at it. I absolutely love this. This is just absolutely mega. So as you can see, we've got a lot of old, new part trees. Um, that's, I'm not gonna get all the chassis out and stuff, but um, the actual chassis itself, brand new. The top level is used and, and the driver section's been painted. So it, it needs a little bit of work. Um, as I say, it's new and old parts. There's some brand new stuff. Um, we've got all the wheels and tyres, the running gear, suspension, parts of the um, guy's body. This box here, all the screws for it. We've got the old um, Black Enbel 540, which is absolutely awesome. Um, he has said 100% that everything is original, so I'm taking these tyres to be original. Um, they're brand new. Oh, wow. Just wow. As I say we've got obviously manual decals for it so I believe everything is there um, there is one thing missing which is the driver figures um, left arm um, so I need to find one and they are like rocking horse poo um, so I may need to do some kind of bodge um, obviously it's like one temp scale so we can get hold of like one temp action figures I might need to get one, pull an arm off, cut it, and do a cut and shove. Um, it's not going to look absolutely cock on, but I think once it's all painted up, I think it would look pretty good. Um, and it's certainly better than having a one-arm driver, as it were. 
Um, we've also got this period um, electrics with it. Oh, that's such a dinky transmitter. I believe it's Futaba FPT 2GS. I'm pretty certain these ran from about 1980 to 82. I could be wrong on that, um, but absolutely in tip top condition with little side battery thing where you've got to tuck your batteries inside. Absolutely class. And with that, we have all the original um, radio gear with it, even down to the um, four AA batteries that's needed to run the, the car. Obviously, um, this was before Beck battery eliminator circuitry. So you had your four batteries inside the car as well. That's how this is going to get built. This is going to be built 100% as it should have been. The size of that receiver and that few tab receiver, it's huge. Uh, and within that bag as well, we've got the old um, three-step speedo, um, which has got the, old, the special mounting because it goes on its side in this car, same as the wild one. So we've got all that to look at. Um, I believe it's all been fully tested and it's all working. I mean, seriously, guys, just how cool is that? You know, it's just... <laughs> and I know I'm sound, I might be sounding a bit pathetic, but how cool is this? I'm going to get to build a 1984 fast attack vehicle from scratch. You know, it just doesn't get much better than that for me. So as you can tell, I'm absolutely made up with this find. Um, in the circles I'm moving in the Tamiya world, I, I do get offered a lot of cars. Um, some are too dear, some are not old enough, some, you know, the re -re's, or some have just got too many parts missing and what have you. But every now and again, I get hold of something, which in my opinion is why I'm running this channel, if I'm honest. Um, Riri's are superb, I absolutely love them. But if I could only work on um, all originals, then I would. But as you guys know, the, these things are hard to come across. So as a buggy itself, you know, it's not... I was going to say, it is a classic, but it's it's not something that's going to take a lot of beating, you know. Um, I was concerned that a 7.2 racing pack wouldn't fit in it because of its age. I thought it might have to be the old 6 volt pack, but luckily it does fit the 7.2 racing pack. Um, but it'd be nice to see if I can get hold of a, a 7.2 humpback battery, just to sort of finish it off. Um, I've, I've also seen sort of going off track slightly, but I know guys who fit LiPo cells into the 7.2 hump casing, um, so you get the, the benefits of 2S, but you get it in that 7.2 humpback package, which is pretty awesome. That might be something for the future for this channel. Mm, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but as I say, super excited. The one thing about this buggy is, um, it's got a lot of pain work on it. Now on the actual manual itself, both pictures are, are done in camouflage. Now, I haven't got the painting skills on normal standard Tamiya spray cans to do a, a camo job. Um, for, in my opinion, that's kind of needs to be spray um, airbrush. I can't do that. But nevertheless, I've seen these cars in three options. You've got the camo, and then you've got the standard khaki colour that it is where they don't paint it, they just sort of do it all this colour and um, paint the driver unit and the gun, the rifle, not rifle, mach the machine gun that goes on the front. Uh, and that looks great, but it, it always kind of looked a little bit unfinished. But there's a third un the third option that a lot of guys have gone for is the just all full army green colour. And that looks pretty cool because there's some stickers, um, there's some, some sort of army style um, whiskey buggy pictures sorry decals that can go on and against that green it just you just like boom instantly you recognize it as an army vehicle um so i'll probably go for that which means a completely different way of building because basically everything that color needs to be painted and it needs to be painted first um so there's a fair bit of work in that so what i now need to do is do my research on this and because i want to get this right um and if that's the case where everything's got to be painted first, then obviously we're going to have to do that and then we'll start the build. <clears throat> Super excited about it. I, I, do, I, I do get giddy over things like this because um, how often do you get a chance to do something like this if you're in this hobby? You know, it's, um, 
it, it's another one ticked off a bucket list for me. Anyway, I don't want to sound too excited, too late. Um, this now, because depending when I post this video, um, it's probably it's summertime here. Now, I'm very aware that winter's coming. Obviously, I'm in Canada at the moment, uh, and I'm in Canada to the end of the year. Um, and because I've been here so long, the winter really sort of harmed this channel because I was just, I, I couldn't do any running videos. So everything I'm doing at the moment with everything around me is I'm just trying to make all the videos and get all these running videos done in this glorious weather. And then all these summer videos will sort of play in the winter because I've got that much of a catalog of videos to come. Um, so I'm, there's no rush to do this one. Um, I'm, no, I'm in no rush to get this thing running. Um, this will be, I'll put this all away now and this will go back on the shelf until all the running videos. This is a little bit like the um, original Thunder Shot that I have to do. Um, there's, there's so much work involved in that that I've, I've just sort of said, right, well that's a winter job. Um, so now I've got a second one and obviously I'll be looking for some more just to sort of keep me busy um, when it gets cold. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, does it? Um, but I, I, as I say, if I get all these running videos done of all the other stuff um, and that's going to keep the channel going and then we've got these more in-depth videos to come. So I hope some of you are watching this are as excited about this as I am because it's mega cool. If anybody knows or has got a left arm driver kicking around in your loft or your basement, please let me know. I'll, I'll buy it off you straight away. I'd much rather use an original um, than like an action figure one. Although I think once, as I say, once it's painted up, I don't think you'll be able to tell. So anyway, I am rattling on big time now. So I just wanted to share that with you guys um, because this is what it's all about for me. 1984, get in. Um, so once again, guys, thanks for watching. It's really appreciated. And if you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us, that'd be awesome. But most of all, smash that notification bell for our weekly videos. And uh, as always, guys, happy assing. <laughs>